Hi, it's Manik44 here and today I invite you to the review of the ICS Challenger pistol. I would like to thank ICS for sending the gun for the review. Almost two years ago, a review of the ICS BLD XAE pistol appeared on my channel. A relatively inexpensive replica that offers a very good range and a build quality. Unfortunately, it's an original ICS design that does not give us as much upgrade options apart from replacing the barrel and the backing. Despite this, it found many satisfied users. ICS has released a few more models since then, which let's say I wasn't particularly interested until I saw the announcement of the Challenger. High Kappa, compatible with TM parts, steel parts of the hammer mechanism, adjustable trigger, hop-up chamber with TDC, barrel with master mode's air hop and all of that on advanced frame. And it's not all. At this point I would like to point out that I'm not an expert on high kappas and I won't say which manufacturer, but I used to have one that broke after three games, so let's say I have little experience. Nevertheless, I tried to learn as much as possible about these pistols in order to be able to show you as much as possible. So if I make a mistake, I apologize in advance. Going back to essence of today's review, as always, we'll see how the replica is built, what features it has and check its performance. But as always, let's start with a little unboxing. In an elegant black and red cardboard box we'll find a card with QR code that will lead us to the user manual, a large card informing us about using 0.30 gram or heavier BBs for the best performance. Similar sticker was on the gun, which for aesthetic reasons I've decided to remove together with a made in Taiwan sticker. A bag with accessories such as a hop-up bucking dedicated to BBs lighter than 0.30 gram, a 14mm counterclockwise thread adapter, all and key for hop-up adjustment, adapter for classic rear sight, and a reverse plug retention clip. In addition, in box we will find also a ramrod, a metal green gas magazine with capacity of 30 BBs, and of course the ICS Challenger pistol. Let's take a closer look at it. The pistol is about 220 mm long and with the magazine but without the BBs it weighed just a little less than 1 kg. The first thing that caught my eye was the finish of individual parts of the gun. Matte, semi-matte and shiny elements that make the gun, despite the finish in one color, are not boring but rather eye-catching. The replica is made of high-quality polymer, aluminium alloy and steel. The entire grip is made of polymer. It has been covered with grooves, which despite being quite shallow, clearly improve the comfort of holding the gun. All manipulators such as adjustable trigger, safeties, magazine catch, the slide Lock and the slide itself, frame, outer barrel and even an enlarged magul that greatly facilitates inserting the magazines are made of aluminium alloy. The first visible element made of steel is the hammer. The rest of the steel elements I will show you when I take the replica apart. Let's go back to the slide. Its characteristic features are cutouts at the top in the front part through which we can see the outer barrel. They make the slide lighter and it's important because at its end we'll find a large aluminium plate to which we can mount a sight in the RMR or dock standard. If you want to use standard front sights, the plate can be uninstalled and replaced with the adapter from the set. In addition to the option of mounting the sight on the slide, of course we find a classic iron sight, which in this case are covered with luminescent paint, thanks to which they glow in the dark. There are also grooves in the slide to improve the grip during cocking the slide and markings, in this case a large Challenger inscription and a smaller Caliber 38 Super Competition grade. The entire slide is finished with semi-matte paint. The whole slide is not very heavy, so the recoil is not very strong and it's easy to keep the gun on the target, but the return could be a bit faster. The visible outer barrel is finished in glossy black color and has markings on the chamber. 38 Super and Game Changer. The outer barrel itself has grooves along its entire length and ends with an 11mm counterclockwise thread into which we can screw the 14mm counterclockwise adapter from the set, which will give us possibility of mounting for example a tracer unit. The outer barrel has a bit of play, but ICS assured me that it should not affect accuracy because of the use of stabilizing screw of the hop-up chamber that secures the chamber with the inner barrel tightly. 
On the front of the aluminium frame of the pistol we find a short recent rail, thanks to which we can mount for example a flashlight or even a scope can. As you can see, the paint on the element is quite thin, because it rubbed off after a few times of putting on the flashlight. Let's move on to the manipulators. The trigger has an over throttle adjustment, that is how much the trigger can move further after releasing the hammer. It is adjusted by tightening or loosening the Allen screw with a 1.5mm key. To shorten the movement, I tighten the screw. And to extend it, I unscrew it. I will describe the trigger work itself ok, the reset is not too long, but the breakpoint is not very clear. The magazine release is slightly enlarged and is located on the left side. The ambidextrous safety works very easily and clearly clicks into place. Of course, there is a grip safety, if it's not pressed, we will not fire. The hammer has two stages and as I mentioned it, it's made of steel, we will come back to it a bit later. The last manipulator is the slide lock. After the last shot, when the magazine is empty, it will lock the slide in the rear position. When we load the fresh mag and release the lock, the BB will be loaded into the chamber and we can shoot. The slide lock lever doubles as a disassembly lever that can be pulled out after moving the slide to this position. Now I can push the lever out from the other side. This will allow us to remove the slide for example for hop-up adjustment or maintenance. The hop-up is adjusted using the Allen key from the kit, just insert it into the hole in the hop-up chamber. Now, by turning to the right, we increase the hop-up, and by turning it to the left, we decrease it. Let's take a look at the magazine. It holds up to 30 BBs, and a full gas charge should be enough to fire two full magazines. It has body made of metal. From polymer we have lips, a BB pusher, and a thick, characteristic base plate. Rubber valves are mounted in the magazine, the upper one can in theory be adjusted by adding a o-ring, but in practice the thread is secured with thread glue, so I leave it be. The bottom one has a small hole that lets out gas vapor to accommodate more liquid gas, so heating while charging is normal, and when the magazine is full it will spit gas. It's time to look inside the replica. I will start disassembling the replica by removing the magazine. Now I will take off the slide, but this time I will do it a bit different than before. I'll put the slide back and put the retention clip that we get in the set on the recoil spring guide rod. Thanks to it, firstly, the slide does not move forward, making it easier to remove. And secondly, it makes it much easier to pull out the entire return spring guide. The return spring guide has an aluminium guide black, quite soft return spring, and a metal washer and rubber gasket that dampens the impact of the slide. The guide rod itself is made of steel. It's time for the barrels, that is the outer barrel and the barrel assembled with the master mod hop-up chamber. The master mod's barrel with a length of 130mm and a diameter of 6.04mm is made to work with the R-Hop master mod system, which I will show you in a moment. In addition, I see is both that is covered with the teflon inside. The Master Mods TDC chamber is in the Tokimari standard, and as I mentioned it, it's adjusted from the bottom. After unscrewing two screws, I can look inside. We'll notice the ring surrounding the backing. It is the hop-up arm with the built-in nub. Thanks to its construction, it presses evenly on the hop-up backing perfectly from the top, thanks to which the BBs should fly straight even with a stronger setting. The barrel with the backing at first glance looks normal, until you take the backing off. Under it we find the R-Hop Master Mods patch, and the backing itself is flat. The set is ideal for use with 0.30g BBs and heavier. If you would like to use lighter than 0.30g BBs, ICS adds a regular hop-up backing in the set. Going back to the slide, let's take a closer look at the BBU. To get to it, just unscrew two screws holding the plate with the rear side and the whole BBU will fall out of the slide without any problems. The nozzle is made of orange polymer and the piston and the housing are made of metal. The piston itself has a rather hard rubber piston head and an additional o-ring. I know that for some it may be an important information, so the bare slide weighs just over 88 grams and the BBU almost 42 grams. It's time to take a look at the rest. The frame is the advanced type, which means, among other things, 
that the guides of the slide are located along its entire length, thanks to which the slide sits more stable on it, and also it disassembles a bit different. The frame is held with two screws on the grip and one in the frame. After unscrewing them, I can remove the frame. The grip features a metal trident sear spring and a trigger ring. I will not disassemble the grip itself, I'm more interested in the frame. I will disassemble it one by one. First, the ambidextrous is safety. Next, the grip safety. Then I push out the two steel pins. I pull out the steel disconnector. Now I can carefully pull out the entire hammer set. Now carefully disassemble the valve reset with its ring. Now I have to unscrew the screw holding the side of the hammer set and remove it. I pull out the steel hammer, steel hammer sear, and steel valve knocker. The posts are also made of steel, and only the assembly is made of aluminum alloy. These are all steel parts, as you can see they match with the promise made by ICS. With such parts inside we do not have to worry about their rapid wear, if at all which should translate into a long, trouble-free operation. When it comes to fitting of the elements, the slide on the frame sits quite nicely and has a minimal play. Let's see what performance we can expect from the replica. And due to the fact that ICS itself recommends using heavier ammunition, I will be testing several BB weights. First, I run the replica with the BLE's 0.28 gram BBs. The air temperature is about 25 degrees Celsius. Hop-up is set for the same for each weight and I use WE brand gas. On 0.28 gram BBs, the average muzzle energy is 0.97 joules. On 0.30 gram BBs, we see a slight increase in the average muzzle energy to 1 joule. On 0.32 gram BBs, we see a further increase in the average muzzle energy to 1.03 joules. On 0.36 gram BBs the first few shots are stronger than in previous tests, but the average is still 1.03 joules. Knowing that there is no energy drop on 0.36 gram BBs, I choose this for shooting test. I shoot from a propped up position, and that day I had strong gusts of wind. The air temperature was about 27 degrees Celsius. At 30 meters, hitting a target slightly larger than the crouching person is not a problem, and the grip pick is quite good. From 40 meters there was no problem either, only two shots were blown to the left. At 50 meters the wind was more problematic and I had to take the appropriate correction, but most of the shots hit the target. The last distance is 60 meters, as you can see from the vegetation the conditions were variable, but still a large part of the shot hit the target. I will just add that all shots were fired on one charge of the magazine with gas, and I set up hop-up on a fairly flat flight path, but there is no problem to set the hop-up even so that 0.36 gram BBs go into space. Personally, I'm very impressed. ICS has promised a lot and delivered it even more. The replica is really well made, and I have nothing to say bad about the quality of the materials and the build. The replica, despite its weight, it's nice to hold, and all manipulators work as they should. Additional accessories such as flashlight can be easily mounted on the lower rear side. Thanks to adapter from the set, we can mount for example a tracer unit. And on the mounting plate on the slide, a RMR style side fits easily. If we want to use standard iron sights, they are of course present and they glow in the dark. The metal magazine holds up to 30 PBs and on one gas charge I was able to fire about 60 shots. The barrel with an R-hop backing and a master mod chamber installed in the replica has no problem to hop 0.36 gram BBs at a distance up to 60 meters. And in case we want to use lighter BBs for some reason, in the set includes the standard hop-up backing. The most important parts are made of steel, which will guarantee long and trouble-free operation, and in combination with the advanced frame and compatibility with Tokimaru parts, it opens up additional options if we want to change something in the replica. The pistol should be available to purchase very soon, when it's out I will add a link in the video description. 
ICS is also planning on hitting the market with some upgrade parts. For now, they show a quick charging handle, larger magazine release button and a straight-shaped trigger. When it comes to compatibility with parts in the Tokyo Marui standard, I had an opportunity to test the pistol with magazines from TM and WE, and both fit very well, as well as the Airsoft Masterpiece slide, which fitted perfectly on the frame. Unfortunately, I have no recordings because those parts were not mine, so you have to trust uh, my word on this. A long time ago, I had a high kappa from another manufacturer, which unfortunately broke down after a few games which discouraged me from this platform. But the Challenger, with the weight, build quality and above all performance made me love it again. This almost 1kg cannon is a lot of fun to shoot and to be honest, I can't wait to take it on a game. If you're looking for a pistol that will have a great performance straight from the box and for which I think with basic maintenance you will not have to worry about it breaking or are you looking for a base for further upgrades i think the ics challenger is a very good choice let me know in the comments what do you think about this replica but i can already say that it's a real game changer and for now thanks for watching and see you next time